Well, my dear friends, before I start, I just want to thank you all for, you know, subscribing to your channel. I, I genuinely appreciate all your support. And as I promised, today I'm going to talk about interviews. You know, personally, I invest so much money for, for a pass and match and also even for like a cap it. So whether you're applying to pass, whether you're applying to cap it, you know, it was over 15 schools that I did interview and there were three questions that was common in every single of them. You probably know it, but the more practice you do, the better you become. So once you know these questions or you already know these questions, you really have to practice for your answer because sometimes you black out because sometimes, you know, there'll be a bunch of people standing right in front of you. My personal experience was that for the first two interviews that I had, I ruined it because I wasn't that confident and I didn't practice as much as I had to. So the very first question, and also they will ask like a few questions. Some of these schools, they ask me a few questions that, you know, catch me a little off guard that I was like, why they ask me these questions? So the first questions that, you know, that most frequently asked was why you choose our school? Why this particular school you apply to? And uh, the best way you can approach to this uh, for answer is to go to the school website. So before every single interview that you have, go to their website, read about their mission, vision, find out about the core curriculum, learn about their weaknesses and their strength, know whether they are more focused in the clinical part or they are more in academia or like they're trying to, you know, see if you're strong in research. Once you knew about these things, once you learn about them, write it down on a piece of paper and then find out about the program director. Where did he or she graduated from? Did he or she like have any contribution, has any contribution uh, on a research projects in a peer reviewed journals? read about their, you know, uh, research projects and also find the chief resident. Usually you can ask a secretary about it, like, okay, who's the chief resident? Could you, you know, guide me? Maybe I can spoke with them, speak with them. So once you talk, talk with chief resident or you can even approach the program director if it's well ahead of time, if it's more than five, six months remain that you, you know, you, you get to the interview or you apply, you still don't know you're going to get interview from this school. You can reach out to the program director. A couple of the schools that, you know, I applied later on. First, I had like a virtual appointment with them over the Zoom. And they told me like, oh, you could be a great candidate. You can apply to our program. I would like to get to know more about you. And well ahead of time i asked about the program like how it is what you guys more focusing on because you know trust me when, when when you do interview you should know that they are not the only one who choose who choose you also you're the one who choosing the school because sometimes you're the one in the match prioritize which school has to come first uh, so that's one thing that you need to know and for second question, they, they always ask, first or second, they always ask, tell us about yourself. This part, it's all related to your um, statement of purpose and CV that you wrote. And guys, be confident. Where I come from, they taught me to be humble. You know, if you talk about yourself, you're bragging. But that's not true, actually. You have to talk about yourself. No matter how small your achievement is, please share that with, with them because it shows how proactive you are. And that's th that what matters, you know. And they enjoy it, listening to it. They are very nice people. They do interview with many people. And, and they are very, you know, professional in this matter. Because back then I wasn't really confident. You have to be confident and believe yourself. Because sometimes there will be one-on-one -on -one interview, but sometimes there will be a bunch of people in a room, and that's <laughs> that's a time that it gets a little bit, you know. Um, for me, it was a I was more nervous when there were more people in the room, and uh, I 
right? I learned from my mistakes that I need to do more practice in front of the mirror. And the more practice that I, the more I did practice, the better I became over time because I almost memorized everything. I didn't black out like my first and second interview. I knew everything and I didn't, you know, put anything blank or I didn't forget anything to mention. Like every single seminar that I attended, all the research project that I published in the peer reviewed journal, I was able to talk about it. No matter like what is your background, you know, you can always talk about the um, complicated case that you worked on, the, um, you know, crazy situation you've been to, things that you have done, you're, um, you have been volunteered, you know, you can always talk about them too. And other questions that, you know, they always ask is that how are you going to balance your lifestyle with the school responsibilities? Or better say, like, how are you going to bring these things into the equilibrium? And for the first and second um, interview, as I said, I was very nervous and I didn't have any sort of practice. And I came up with uh, almost a lie. I was like, I do a cold shower or I do a, a ice bathing, maybe because of the social media that I, <laughs> I used to watch. I came up with this answer and it was obvious that I'm lying because <laughs> I didn't know how to respond to that. But later on, when I thought to myself, I remember like my Indian roommate, we used to cook in the weekend like a chicken curry. Then I remember that sometimes in the weekend, I watch YouTube video for new cuisine, like learned how to make Korean food. I learned how to do risotto. So I ended up, you know, come up with the things that I really do. And, and um, I always also mentioned that I do love playing chess. You know, I used to play chess a lot. And one of the few of the program directors said that, okay, hopefully once you get to the program, we should definitely play chess together. So for these questions, I told them I do exercise and, and that's how I can, you know, relieve stress from the school and, and be more focused when I'm in the school, be more proactive. There were a few questions that, you know, caught me off guard. And guys, I applied to different programs. I did cap it, I did pass and match, and, and somehow I knew where I want to be. But at the same time, you know, when, when, you are, uh, when you don't have enough knowledge, you sometimes make mistakes. So I've learned from it anyway. But Four questions that different, you know, uh, pro specialty programs asked me and also CAPIT program asked me was the first one that caught me off guard was, uh, okay, is scaling and root planning surgical or non-surgical? And by the way, the, the person who asked me these questions, none of them were program directors, they were faculties. And I, and I told him it's a non-surgical, but you know, it caught me off guard. I was like, why did he ask me? Like, he doubt my, you know, my knowledge. Anyway, the second question, it was a different school, different program, different specialty was, okay, when you want to place an implant, um, how far and how much distance from the tooth and from the um, implant to implant you're going to, you know, allocate. And for the implant and implant, the ratio is 3 millimeter from implant to tooth is 1.5 millimeter. That was another question. Again, another question from faculty, and he asked me for the, tell me the bacteria in red and orange complex in the pyramid for the perio. That was another question. Another question again, and this one was like, what is the primary stress bearing area for the complete denture in the mandible? And it's a buckle shelf. And these few, these three, four questions, they were the one that I, I vividly remember because they caught me a little off guard that why they are asking. And guys, also when you talk about, like if you have done any research projects back home or in the United States, when you talk about your research projects, make sure you know it comprehensive, comprehensively already because 
they might ask questions uh, about it too like what part did you do whether you did introduction method and materials results discussion you know conclusion whatever is that be prepared for it and and know what you have done pretty well and sometimes when i had a one-on-one -on -one interview spe especially with program directors because i went to their website i knew where they graduated from what research they worked on at the very end before you know he invite me or he tell me to you know the next person comes in i would say i really like the research that you worked on you know and you published it in this journal and sometimes there were another 20 30 minutes that they talked with me about their own research that's very interesting i learned so much from it and and learned so much from them but just like when i came out the next person and the previous person, he told me like, oh, I just spent 50, 20 minutes inside the room. What did you guys talk about that you have been to his room for one hour and 10, 20 minutes? You know, this is that was a really, you know, boosting my confidence. Anyway, guys, I hope you, you know, learned something from this uh, video. Leave any comments that you have or any, you know, feedback in the comment below let me know if you guys have already taken your interview you have some info and knowledge to share with us in this channel please do not hesitate and do it let's help each other it's very important and till next video have a good one take care guys good luck with your you know interviews